welcome back to Little River Cottage and to my apiary blog. This is where I learn how to be a beekeeper. I've only really just finished my apiary course and it was a year long intensive course, one in which I thoroughly enjoyed and this is the first time I've ever had bees and the first time the bees have been here on our property. So really this vlog is about that, learning how to look after them and see them through winter which is what we're going into and uh, the processes involve coming out of winter and you know just letting them live their bee life. Reviewing my last vlog, I realized that a little bit more information would have been nice, right? About the hive and the hive tools and feeding them and what this is and what that is. So with that in mind, this is what past Corey created. Uh, go and have a look. I make my sugar solution in bulk and to do that I use 10 kgs worth of sugar and melt it with 10 kgs or 10 litres of water at a time. I do this slowly so that it, it doesn't boil. It really is just until all of those granules have melted down. And when then you look into the pot, you see that it's completely clear. It's not grainy. Give it a stir. Have a look at the spoon and it should just be a syrup solution. I then pour that syrup into a container like this. This is for ease. I can just go to it when I need to feed the bees and uh, it's less time consuming. I don't have a lot of time to make this up as I go. And they go through this quite quickly, believe it or not. They go through between six and 10 liters of bee syrup a week. So that's quite a lot, especially going into autumn when there isn't uh, as much nectar uh, readily available for them to collect to build their winter store. And that's what we're doing. We're actually building, helping them build their winter store up so that they can survive the winter. Really important. We also want hive health and uh, an improved population coming out of winter. So to do that, I add this product. It's called Agri-Sea and it literally has all of the natural sourced minerals and amino acids and vitamins to help uh, the bees see themselves through winter and encourage a nice healthy hive. Let's talk hive tools and components. Uh, you'll often hear me mentioning certain things, so it's a good, good idea just to give you a bit of an introduction into what I use when I go into the hive or visit the bees. Let's start with tools. These are literally hive tools, uh, quite important. Uh, I use both of them. There are a couple of different options that you can go with. And what these are used for are separating the frames within the hive. And the frames are the uh, wood wooden structures that the bees build the combs out, they construct their home in it, and, um, and honey. Right. So it has a hook and it helps you to get that frame out so you can lift it out of the hive. Very handy. You want to keep these as clean as possible. Quite difficult because it gets populous on there. So what you need to do is you need to scorch them after you use them. And you do that with a blow, like a, a blow torch or um, anything that emits heat with the hive tool sterilized. The reason why you sterilize your tools, very important, is because of you don't want to spread diseases in amongst your hives and um, it's just part of hygiene really and good beekeeping. The other tool that we have speaking of diseases and checking them out <laughs> to make sure your hive is clean and free from disease is this. This is a brood comb 
bit and it's a bit brutal but you have to do it to check it you prick into the brood into the brood and uh, remove the substance within it and you look for varroa mites with this the second uh, tool that I have here are matchsticks it's a nice little watertight container I remove the flammable head from the matchstick can you see that? I remove the flammable head from the matchstick and just leave the, the stick. And this is used for conducting a string test in the brood. You pop it into the cell, mix it around, and then you pull it out. What you're looking for with this tiny piece of uh, wood is that you're looking for AFB, American Fowl Brood. You do not want American Fowl Brood. So it's really important to uh, check any abnormal cells that you find in the hive. Anything that's suspect, better to be safe than sorry. Give it the string test. Right, the next is this. I love this, it's really soft. And this is literally just for brushing the bees when you're about to close the hive or if they're getting a little they're a little bit too much on top of the brood uh, on top of the frames uh, just give them a very gentle brush and they will come off with this this is your smoker you want to clean this after each use as well the smoker is this a chamber with bellows and you put fuel inside this. Uh, pine needles work really well. So you put pine needles in there. Sometimes these uh, wood chips, they work well as, as well, uh, but they can burn a little hot. So don't use too many. And I also find using some cabbage tree leaves, dry ones. You can use some of those. You don't need many at all. Just scrunch it up, pop it in. A bit of hessian sack is really good to get it going. And then you light it, pop it in, secure it up. light it and get it going and we use this uh, just to settle the bees down to calm them so that you can get into the hive it doesn't hurt the bees you just need to make sure that it doesn't burn too hot let's see anything you want to keep your smoker in a metal bucket Right, this stops any chance of it tipping over and starting a fire, especially with us. We live uh, in, a, in a space that is full of native bush, regenerating native bush. So it's really important to, uh, to be safe. I have a little bit of a stick here and I usually just pop that in on the way out of the hive and that um, cuts down the oxygen going into the smoker and will um, extinguish any, well, it will extinguish it. In the last video, you heard me talking about Baverol and uh, this is the autumn Varroa treatment that goes into the hive and it stays in the hive for around 10 weeks and then just before you close down the hive the last time that you actually go into the hive you will remove these strips but they come they come like this and there's four in a pack and uh, that's what you pop into your hive when you're going into autumn 
it's a chemical treatment. There's a different treatment for spring, uh, which we'll go into much later when we reopen the hive again. But for sense of purpose, Baverol. The last thing I'm going to show you is this. Yeah, we'll get it right. <laughs> there we go. This is a frame holder and this just slots onto the edge of the hive and it's just something that when you take the frames out, because you want to take one or two out so you can move the frames backwards and forwards to check them and uh, you can rest it on here and you're not putting it on the ground, it doesn't disturb the bees and it's just a really handy tool. So those are the main tools that I use in the hive. Continuing on with different aspects of hive tools and equipment and the hive while I'm here. Uh, this here is an entrance reducer. It's on at the moment because uh, we do have wasps uh, around and um, this minimizes the opportunity of a wasp getting into the hive and uh, you know killing bees. Uh, there's guard bees that um, are stationed around this area and they keep an eye out for uh, wasps and any form of threat. At the moment I'm starting to become a threat and I don't have any PPE on so I'm not going to disturb them too much. This wooden structure here that is separating the bottom box from the top box this is called a queen excluder. So currently the queen is in the bottom brood box and this box here is being filled out with honey for their winter store. When I close down the hive, I will remove this and I'll also remove this. But um, this I will remo remove especially so that uh, the queen can move freely um, between the top and the bottom uh, boxes. If I don't do that, the bees are going to move into this top box where it's nice and warm, and they'll leave the queen. They'll leave the queen by herself, and she will starve and she will die. And we don't want that, so uh, we want her to be able to move, and the bees to be able to move with her. The black thing here, this very top piece that you saw, this is the top feeder that I'm filling. It is the least amount of intrusion uh, for me to go into the hive. The other option would have been a side feeder. Uh, not ideal. You literally have to go into the hive each and every time you use that. But with a top feeder, I just take the hive lid off and uh, the hive mat and just fill it up and then I can close it up and I haven't actually gone into the hive and disrupted the bees. Today we'll be closing down the hive for winter. It'll be one of the last opportunities we get before winter to be able to check the condition of the bees, queen presence, the brood, how that is, if they're building it out for their own winter store, the pollen store, the nectar stores that are going on in there, if there's any capped honey as well, the condition of the bees, how healthy are they, uh, the varroa mite situation, Speaking of varroa mites, we will be removing the baverol strips from that bottom brood box today as well. And also along with the queen excluder. We'll see how the wasp situation is as well. And if that's all good, then we'll remove that hive entrance reducer so that the bees have better access in and out. If I see like one wasp, then it's staying on for a little bit longer. I'm just too too nervous to let it off because uh, wasps are gnarly and they like to get in there and rob the hive and kill the bees so yeah we'll see how all of that situation's going how they're feeding in that top feed as well uh, we'll probably empty that out if they haven't had any and uh, and then you know just fill it up with a little bit um, at the end when we close the hive off all right Let's go and have a look. <laughs> a little nervous. Good nerves, though.
Paint my life into a masterpiece Coloring it how I want it to be Won't stop till I see what I want to see A, a beautiful pattern you can see that lovely arch that's come through and on this side look at that that's capped it's a beautiful pattern they look very happy I'm picking up books to get inside the heads of the ones who happen to life instead of it happening to them. Okay, so I am going to just be checking a couple of frames as well, and hopefully, I can show you some pollen and some nectar inside that comb. Uh, be interesting to see what they're actually doing in this box uh, to see if there's any winter store being built out if there's any uh, queen presents to be <laughs> she's not in the top box Favorable strip. This is what it looks like. Goes in one side of a frame and then hooks over two other frames like that. So here we have some capped honey, lots of nectar, and look at all that pollen. Isn't it gorgeous? And we have, let me see, oh yes, where are they? And we have larvae in there. Can you see that? And lots of pollen. Look at that color and nectar. Look at the pollen. Look at the pollen there on his baskets, on her baskets. Isn't that beautiful? So lovely. Okay, can you see those that brown dot and that poor wing? That is what varroa mite does. So we have deformed wing, definitely have varroa. Now that's growing since it was in um, in the cell growing. So that bavaral strips, it hasn't hasn't gotten rid of, hasn't protected. Well, I've just come from the hive and I've removed the queen excluder, as you can see. Talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about what I found in that hive. Going into that bottom brood box, the, the top box looked fabulous. The, the way that they had been filling out those combs it was just beautiful. There was a lot of pollen and a lot of nectar and a lot of capped honey which is great for their winter store 
one of the reasons I uncovered that maybe they weren't moving up into that top box and feeding is because there was just a lot of blockage here. I've removed some of it, but I just wanted to show you that they will literally build anywhere and everywhere to do to do and to create and uh, yeah I found some dead bees stuck between these um, entrance points as well so I do believe that it was inhibiting their movement between the boxes and and quite possibly their feeding as well I thought it might have been the cold could be a combination of things who knows best to just tick those boxes so we have removed it so now the queen can move up and down and uh, the bees won't desert her for the warmer for the warmer part of the hive going into that bottom brood box couldn't find the queen could definitely see uh, her presence though found some uh, larvae and some pupae which is great uh, a cat brood which was brilliant that's exactly what you want to be looking for lots of again lots of nectar a variety a beautiful variety of color in the pollen so it really says what they're what they're collecting around here which is quite exciting one of the things that I did notice that concerned me was I noticed a bee that just looked funny and after watching the bees for quite a while and believe me I'll just come up here and not disturb the hive and just sit and watch them because uh, I'm a little freaky like that <laughs> and uh, this one just didn't look good so I checked a couple of other frames and then I noticed that uh, there was there were more bees that were looking like the one that I just saw. Closer inspection showed me that their wings were deformed or just they, the wings, just, oh the poor little things, the wings just weren't okay. And um, then I noticed a couple of passengers riding on the backs of those bees in particular and that's Varroa mite and adult Varroa mite no freaking less. And um, and that's parasitic wing, um, parasitic wing syndrome, where they come out when they hatch, uh, their wings are deformed just from the varroa mite. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. I saw a lot, maybe six, seven, eight. There's uh, a bit of a bee guru. <laughs> His name's Shane. He lives over in the next valley from me. Uh, he's also an AFB inspector. I don't want to go into winter with uh, Varroa like that because the bees won't survive. They just won't. It will just go straight through the colony. And in fact, as soon as you start seeing parasitic wing, wing syndrome like that, then I'm not, I'm not confident that um, my beautiful little lily hive is going to survive this winter, which is, very upsetting and I'm not going to dwell on that um, so I'm going to work really hard on not concentrating on that and concentrating on what I the actions that I can take to uh, to find out more information to build a plan um, and and possibly hopefully find um, a solution for this yeah, I'll insert some photos. I believe I took some close-up footage of it. Yeah, not going to think about it. Oh. Oh. It's the first time that I've not felt calm in the hive. It'll be right. Call the professionals. You're still learning. <laughs> Call the professionals. We'll give you an update. It's me.